Alright everybody, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been quite some time. Uh, a couple things you might notice right off the bat if my voice sounds different. I got a new headset, so my dog decided to uh, chew up the other one. So, I apologize for not uploading any videos here in uh, quite some time. Life just got in the way, uh, a lot of crazy stuff happened, but I won't bore you with that. So, good news is we are back in our professional series here. We are in the Airbus A320 with the latest update on 11.31. And I just updated the uh, Flight Factor Airbus A320 as well. If you are unfamiliar with where we are in this video, uh, check out the two previous videos in this series, the professional series. That, can, that will uh, talk about the pre-flight and then the takeoff phase. Right now we are in the cruise climb, getting ready to a level off at cruise in our flight from Dallas Fort Worth to Phoenix Arizona so all right as we're climbing out uh, as you would probably imagine there's not too much uh, going on in the cockpit so a couple things we'd like to check just offhand before I reach our cruise altitude a couple things we'll talk about is you obviously want to look at your ND here and want to see where our level off is so you can tell when I zoom the range out, this little blue arrow here, this is a level off stick. There's a lot of symbols that the Airbus gives us in the uh, ND here, on the ND. And what I'm going to do is I'll post this up on the screen here, this handy little chart. If you're unfamiliar, uh, these are all the symbols of what uh, the aircraft can provide. They're all very valuable information. Right now though in cruise, or in, in the cruise climb I should say, we're looking for a level off. Where's that going to be? Uh, also. Depending on where you fly, you may be required to have the airport push button on. Now, unfortunately, at X-Plane, you can't filter any of these out as far as I am aware. In the real aircraft, the airport is the airport push button here filters out all the airports that we are unauthorized to go into. So you, you only have airports that can take the Airbus and uh, that we have some kind of uh, service or something down there for emergency diversion. So. On the real airplane, the screen is much less cluttered. There may only be a handful of airports uh, on the screen at any given time. So, in the sim world, I'll probably just keep it in constraint mode just to keep this uh, a little bit more clean. Also, as we're climbing out, double checking our cruise ecam here. Oops. So, we want to make sure our cabin is climbing 200 feet per minute. Right now, the cabin altitude is at 5,600 feet per minute. Gross weight is looking good. All of our temperatures and vibes are in the green. Pretty high vibes on this engine, but they're all in the green. So we just kind of hang back now and uh, we continue our climb out. I'll uh, check back in with you here as we level off and cruise. All right, we are approaching 36 for 37,000 feet. The call out there amongst the flight crew is going to be 36 or 37 and the pilot monitoring would say check verify that and then we will begin our procedure in cruise now as the aircraft levels off here in cruise smooth ride we're anticipating that we'll go ahead and turn the seatbelt sign off for the uh, for the folks in the back and then we'll go ahead and you know probably call the flight attendant give them an update let them know how far out we've got so they can kind of schedule their services in the back, keep everybody in the loop and on the same page. Now as the aircraft approaches within 400 feet of the level off altitude here, you're going to see an FMA change. It's very important that we're always announcing the FMA. All right, as the aircraft approaches its level off altitude of 37,000 feet, we will have an FMA change right here in our column. Mock Alt Star. Make sure we announce that, and then I'll go ahead and manage the speed. I had it uh, selected at 76 there. Now we're at Mock Alt Alt Cruise. That is our uh, final FMA that we are looking for. Want to make sure we are in cruise mode. Um, the reason I had the speed back to help the climb out just a little bit faster. I actually zeroed the weather for this flight. So nice clear skies but also got rid of our headwind there, so it made our climb a little bit difficult in the high flight levels. As we get into cruise here, as the aircraft levels off, we'll go ahead and move our TCAS from above to all. 
that way we now have a more balanced view on the TCAS to see what's going on. And then what we'll do is we come to our status pages and we're going to just go ahead and review the aircraft systems. So what I'll do is I'll uh, just come here and I'll press the all button. As you, as you press the all button, you can just cycle all the way through. Uh, makes it a little bit easier for lazy pilots like myself instead of having to click each one. So let's go ahead and talk about these status pages. Obviously the first one here, this is your true Z cam. This is always going to be displayed in normal conditions. It gives you a lot of good information and some redundant information that we're also going to check in the other systems pages. Right now we're looking at our cruise fuel. We've got used, our total fuel used right here, and uh, each engine respectively. We've got our oil, our vibes, everything looks good. Landing field elevation, 99% of the time, at least in uh, most popular parts of the world, you're going to have this in auto. Um, there are going to be some airports where you may have to manually put the landing elevation in, um, maybe somewhere over you know, a different continent or less popular areas. Basically what this is, if the airport's not in the database, you have to manually input the landing field elevation. That's not a big deal. You just come right up here to your overhead and you would put this into, uh, you would rotate this knob to whatever the uh, elevation was. Now it doesn't mean that the pressurization is going to be in manual mode, it just means you're manually setting the landing field elevation. There's actually three separate modes here. We have fully auto, we have automatic with manual field elevation, and then we have full manual control. Fuel manual control, full manual control, would be if the cabin pressure uh, CPCS system went out and we had to manually take command of the outflow valve and control the pressure of the cabin. That's kind of a pain to do, but you would control that right here with this knob, changing the outflow valve up or down. But that's all in auto right now. Everything looks good. We've got our standard, you know, temperatures here, our TAT, our SAT, and the ISA minus one. And of course, our cabin temperatures. All right, so cruise page looks good. We'll go ahead and cycle over to the engine page. Again, a bunch of redundant information here. Nothing new to look at. We'll continue on. The bleed page, this is always good to, uh, to look at. Interesting that the high pressure valves are open. I think I noted this before a while back. With the engine at this power setting, about 84.5%, these high pressure valves should be closed. What happens here is when the engine has enough power or is at a high enough power setting the these valves will close allowing the low pressure valves to run the bleeds because the engine is producing enough thrust that it can has enough has enough pressure now when you bring the thrust levers to idle these high pressure valves should open which will then take high press higher pressure bleed air from the engines even at low power settings to still power the bleeds if you need the bleeds for ice or, or what have you. So this is incorrect right here. These valves should be closed. Let me uh, real quick bring the thrust levers to idle. See what happens here. Yeah, see, so now these valves should be opening up, but they are remaining in the open position. So that's uh, incorrect there. Let's go ahead and get our thrust back, auto thrust. So that's actually something we look for because if this valve depicts open in flight, that's incorrect and it needs to be written up and what maintenance will do, they'll come out to the aircraft, they'll actually wire it shut and then we have a procedure where we will manually control the uh, cross bleed valve and the engine bleed ourselves until maintenance can fix the problem. So that's what we're looking for here. We've found it but obviously we don't have maintenance we can't write it up so but that is incorrect those valves should be closed in cruise all right moving on to the cabin pressurization page landing field elevation again redundant information we got some more stuff here we've got our uh, vertical speed for, uh, vertical speed our vertical speed feet per minute indicator here for the cabin this is our cabin altitude 7600 feet and our delta p you change the psi is at 7.9 that's below our limits we are good to go also, this is the aircraft ventilation. Now, if you remember on the walk around video, I said you come around the nose and you look at this, it's kind of hard to see, this valve right here. 
will actually open up when the skin temperature is warm and we need to cool the avionics. So you could actually check that right here. That would be the outlet. And the inlet is, of course, on the other side of the aircraft, on the left side of the aircraft. But in flight, this is the normal configuration. This is the closed circuit configuration. Obviously, there's plenty of airflow. It's nice and cool up here. We don't need any extra ventilation to the avionics compartment. So this is normal. And actually, let's go ahead and see if I can override this. I don't appear that I can. There we go. Hey, now I can open the outlet. When I do the closed circulation, the smoke configuration, the outlet valve is open. So let's see if we can see it on the outside of the aircraft now. And it's very hard to see, guys, but I think that's supposed to be open, that little line right there. It, let's go ahead and go back to normal and take a look. Yeah, and now you can see that it's it's closed. So maybe just a little work on their modeling there. It had a little slit open there, which uh, is actually correct because it's the intermediate valve, which is right in the middle here. So that that does work, which is nice to see. Um, but obviously, normal configuration is the closed configuration in flight, unless somebody lets uh, or passes some gas and you want to, you know, kind of clear the cockpit out. So sometimes you may or may not do that. Allegedly, I didn't tell you though. All right, so cabin pressurization is looking good. We'll continue cycling through the status pages here. Here's our electrics page. Always just take a brief look at this, make sure our batteries aren't discharging, anything like that. Everything looks to be running totally normal. Generator two is powering the right side, generator one powering the left side, as well as the AC essential bus. That looks fantastic. Next page, hydraulics. This is a big one to check. I always check this one. Uh, quite often, especially every, about every 30 minutes. In the real aircraft, it's normal to see these hydraulic quantity indicators actually go below their normal position, just because when the gear is up and the change in pressure and all that, these may actually show somewhere in the middle. But as long as they aren't in the amber, we are good to go. Now, I did have an aircraft a couple of months back that we actually pulled up the hydraulics page and we saw yellow, I'm sorry, it was the green hydraulic system, was just above the ember, and it, we actually had a leak, and it actually got all the way down and started flashing, and of course, even if I didn't check that, we would get an ECAM message once it reached the caution limit and popped up, which is a hydraulics, which is kind of a big deal, um, especially in modern jetliners. So, we always check it just to see, you know, if, you, if you're checking it and you see it dropping, hey, you may have a leak, you may be able to remedy a situation before it gets uh, critical into the, uh, into the limits there. But definitely always want to keep an eye on our hydraulics. If you follow the pilot series at all, I've talked about the PTU pressurization and how it takes uh, fluid from one system to pressurize the other systems. Very complex, but simple at the same time. Uh, great design there on the PTU. But this page looks correct, everything looks good. Our fuel page. Right now we're looking, we've got some unburnt fuel there in the center tank, that's normal. Everything else looks good. When the aircraft reaches, oh gosh, I should know this. I, I know it in pounds, I think it's like 1100 or something pounds. The outer wing tanks will actually open their transfer valves and the fuel from the outer wing tanks will flow into the main wing tanks. And you'll see a little triangle right here at the base of your fuel tanks. And that just means that the transfer valve is open. You'll also get a message on your upper ECAM saying outer wing tank fuel transferred. That is totally normal. That's just letting you know you've got approximately 45 minutes to an hour's worth of fuel left. So when you see that message pop up, typically you're looking at, you know, you're on your descent or maybe you've been holding for weather and things are starting to get a little bit tight on gas. Um, but it is a totally normal situation. The only way to close the valves when you get those indications here is during the next refueling sequence. So there's nothing the pilot can do to close the outer wing transfer valves. It is only closed during the next refueling sequence uh, when the refueler hooks up to the aircraft. But we're checking for imbalances, making sure everything's burning evenly, which it is. A little bit unbalanced here. So let's go ahead and do a, a fuel 
transfer. Now, in the Airbus, there is no transferring of fuel, so I should rephrase that. We can, we'll just change the way the fuel is burning. Now, this is only 100 kilos off, so it's really not a big deal. But in case you find yourself in a situation where one tank is significantly lower than the other, what we need to do is stop burning as much fuel as we can from that tank. So how we do that is we isolate the jet pumps and we let the aircraft cross feed from the other tank. So this is my low tank here on the left. So I want to burn from the right tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my left tank pumps off and I'm going to open the cross feed valve. And I did that backwards. I'm going to do that again for you. The proper way to do this, open the cross feed valve first and then go ahead and turn off your low side tank. Now what's going to happen is this aircraft will still gravity feed and we should get an ECAM here saying that the uh, the left wing tank pumps are off. We're not getting that ECAM right now so that uh, does not look to be simulated yet but it, we would get a little master caution ding uh, left fuel tank pumps off gravity feed only G limits, etc., etc. So we don't have that right now, but we can still check. We'll check back and we'll see if this uh, will eventually burn down here. Let's see, we're 2720. So what's happening is now these jet pumps, instead, well, since the valves are closed, the easiest way for this engine to get fuel is going to be from these jet pumps. So. While we're not transferring fuel from tank to tank, we're just burning fuel faster from the right tank. And you can see that it is actually working. We are burning down now from the right tank. All right, as the fuel tanks are equaling out now, we're going to reverse order, click on these switches. So the first thing we did, we opened the cross feed valve and then we turned the pumps off. Now we're gonna start at the pumps. We wanna turn the pumps on and then we'll close the cross feed valve and now we've got a very nice and balanced fuel system. Alright, continuing on now on our ECAM status check here in cruise. We have our APU page. Obviously this should be off, which it is. That looks normal. Air conditioning. I've touched on this in uh, on another aircraft before but let's go ahead and take a look at it again basically what this does this controls or this depicts our cabin temperature so pack one runs to the cockpit pack two runs to the forward and aft cabin what this is right here this is a hot air the main hot air valve so essentially what happens is we've got hot bleed air coming into the system and then we have another set of valves called trim air valves and basically what the trim air valves do is they individually determine how much hot air we're going to let through the valve into a mixing unit and then into the cabin. So there's a lot of extra stuff here that's not depicted on the ECAM page and this is correct in the real aircraft as well. This is the only depiction you get but as someone who's typed on the Airbus you know the underlying systems. You know what's going on behind the scenes here so I'm trying to relay that to you because we're going to go ahead and we're going to move the temperature around here. So let's go ahead and adjust the cockpit temperature. Let's go ahead and say we're getting a little bit toasty. So we're gonna go ahead and cool the cockpit. So what happens is the trim air valve will close a little bit, reducing hot air into the mixing unit, which will then reduce the cockpit air temperature. You can see it did that. All right, and we can also increase temperature. So as we open that, the trim air valve will open more, allowing more hot air to run through the trim air valve into the mixing unit, increasing the temperature of the cockpit. So the aft cabin always tends to get a little bit warmer, so let's go ahead and cool the aft cabin down. Now this is off pack two. You can see the trim air valve here is closing, and that's going to start cooling the aft cabin. There it goes. We'll go ahead and we'll close that one as well. We'll keep the cockpit a little bit warmer. That's about the typical configuration I like to keep it in. The cockpit does tend to get cold, especially on long flights, because Right here, you've got uh, avionics bay, and this plate down here on the floor gets very cold on your feet. Some aircraft or some airlines actually have foot warmers installed, 
ours do not, unfortunately, so your feet can get a little bit cold. One other thing, so we've talked about, these are kind of the temperature controls, but they're controlling the, the trim air valves, right? They're not controlling the specific temperature. We're just kind of controlling the trim air valves. But also we can do is if we had an issue that required us to turn the hot air valve off, on our air conditioning panel here, you can see hot air off. This valve should close, which it's not. So that's a problem. That's uh, in the real aircraft, that would actually close but that's obviously not simulated yet. So that's just a little bit about the temperature control. Let's continue on with our systems pages here. When we get to the door oxygen page, hopefully these are all armed and, and, uh, and locked, which they are, but the thing that's interesting here is the only message that I would get on a status page that I would not get an ECAM for is this right here. If this oxygen got below the green limit and was in the amber, I would not have a upper ECAM notification. So while this is all kind of redundant because if we if anything went wrong like with hydraulics or a fuel balance or imbalance or a bleed problem, while yes it would show amber on the status page, we would also get an ECAM drawing our attention to that page just in case you know we, we weren't looking at it that's for everything on these status pages except the oxygen right here so that's one thing you always want to just double check make sure that your oxygen is the green you will not get an enunciator for that all right onto the wheel pages this looks normal doors are closed or the I shouldn't say these aren't actual doors these are landing gear uh, LG ICUs. They are computer sensors. So basically they are sensing the door position is closed, which they are. They should be. They're green. That looks good. Wheel temperatures are uh, zero normal. And then the last page is the flight control page. Everything else looks good here. We want to make sure that there's no abnormal flight control surface position. You know, we don't want, you know, one of the ailerons way out of whack. Or maybe the rudder is, is bent. Hopefully not. And you have a really large trim angle or something so this is all normal here just take a quick uh, look at it also if you're running with these GBY GB GY all that stuff these are the hydraulic systems running these flight control surfaces so on the rudder it's powered by the green blue and yellow all three the left elevator is controlled by blue and green hydraulics the right elevator is yellow and blue hydraulics the reason that it's different for every single one is that way if you were to have a hydraulic system failure of two hydraulic systems and you only had one hydraulic system left you could still manipulate the aircraft in in any it doesn't matter which hydraulic system you have left if whether you had one green system left one yellow or one blue you would still have your flight control movement which is critical hydraulics are the lifeblood of this airplane if you don't have hydraulics you cannot control the flight control services therefore you will not be able to control the airplane so that's why we have that redundant design on the hydraulics. All right, once I get to the flight control page, I'll just go ahead and click the flight control. That brings us right back to the cruise. Nothing on the status. Everything looks normal. So we've, at this point, concluded our cruise flow. Now, that was definitely an expanded version. That only takes maybe 20 to 30 seconds uh, once we reach a cruise. And just boom, 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 flip it through the pages. One other thing we can do, too, is update the winds. Uh, and you know what? I'm not going to do it in the sim because I think I had a, uh, I got a crash of desktop messing around with this. So I'm not going to do it. But in the real aircraft, you would, you could update your winds as well and make sure that is good to go. So we're, now we're in cruise and we would check those status pages every 30 minutes. Talking to ATC. We might have a little lunch, bring out the table, put the seat back, and we're just cruising. So... That's going to conclude it for this video. I know it's much shorter. When I get back, we're going to do the descent and approach video. That one will be a little bit longer. So uh, thanks for sticking around, guys. I do apologize again for not getting these videos out uh, for quite a while there. It's been, there's been a dry spot, definitely. 
uh, like I said, there's been a lot of things going on in personal family life and all that. So we are back. The other good news is I also have I have the footage. All the remaining footage for this series is recorded. So it's all, I just got to edit it, and I'm going to get it out to you. Hopefully, I'll have that uh, approach and landing for you on Friday. And after that, that'll conclude the professional series in the normals. And I want to start taking suggestions. So you guys go ahead, comment below. Let me know what you want to see. Uh, in the Airbus you want to see me do whether it's uh, I'm getting a lot of requests for VOR approaches I'm gonna do one of those. I'll do a VOR approach um, I've done cat 3 stuff But and I've done the localizer. So if there's any other approaches you want to see I'll probably do GPS as well but um, You guys comment below let me know what you want to see me do in future videos because I'm, I'm doing this for you guys I want you guys to uh, learn the Airbus more and, and, and be comfortable with the Airbus so Go ahead, comment below, let me know what you want to see done. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you guys again very soon.